My name is Vlad Ratsiu. I'm uh, working, uh, I'm a professor of hepatology. I'm working in Paris in a, in a hospital, in a, in a university affiliated hospital called PTS Alpetria. The article is about non-alcoholic steatohepatitis and we will, will try to provide an historical perspective of far, how far have we gotten into recognizing and understanding the disease. What have been the progress made uh, and uh, what is to be left to be done in the future. NASH is an important topic so it, because it, it is increasingly common. Uh, it is believed to be the most common chronic liver disease and uh, it is a, a liver disease that has a, um, an important burden in terms of uh, uh, complications of liver disease. So it is uh, increasingly being recognized as a, a major cause of cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. The other thing that is very important is that it now becomes a global disease which is no longer restricted uh, to affluent countries, to countries that have a Western lifestyle, but is also now described as rising in incidence in parts of the world that are developing countries like Asian countries, China, India, uh, a lot of patients in these countries are now being diagnosed with, with NASH. So this is the reason why uh, we're very concerned about this disease. One of the major achievements is the fact that we identified this pathological process as a disease on its own. When that disease was identified in 1981, it was described as a exclusion criteria, as a disease that exists there only because other conditions are not present. That's why it is called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. What we have come now to understand is, that, is what defines this disease phenotypically, which is the association with the metabolic syndrome, obesity, diabetes, insulin resistance. And no longer the fact that other conditions are not present in an individual. So this is what I mean by a disease on its own. It opens the door to a whole different interpretation of the pathological condition of a patient because now we can acknowledge the fact that someone can have alcohol consumption or viral infection or autoimmune liver diseases together with obesity, diabetes, and therefore together with NASH. Another thing that we have come to understand much better is the natural history of the disease. So now we have good demonstration from large cohorts from different parts of the world that NASH can increase liver-related mortality, is a cause of cirrhosis, and can cause liver cancer. A third important aspect where a lot of progress have been made, has been made in the past uh, 20 years or so, is the description of a clear histological classification of the disease that allows its, its identification based on liver biopsy and, uh, uh, and also allows to have some idea about the prognosis related to the presence of some of the histological lesions. There has been tremendous progress made uh, by basic scientists around the world in understanding the pathways of liver injury associated with steatohepatitis. Uh, we now recognize much better the role of insulin resistance, of lipotoxicity, the multiplicity of pathways that can induce inflammation and cell injury in this condition. The third important uh, uh, breakthrough, and we're only at the beginning of that, is the understanding of the uh, genetic predisposition for this disease, as now there have been many uh, large-scale uh, genome-wide analysis studies that have been performed that started to identify genetic predispositions and particular mutations that seem to favor the more severe forms of this disease. There has also been some progress on the therapeutic side uh, that have, we have witnessed in the past 10 years. And I think the most significant one is realizing that this disease is a real indication for therapy. There is no more any question that at least patients with more severe and more advanced forms of this disease are in need of therapy and are in need of, of if diet and lifestyle measures fail, in need of drugs that will improve uh, liver injury. We have started to identify some very promising pharmacological targets that could lead to the identification and testing of uh, maybe future drugs in this condition. There are many challenges ahead of us, and I think uh, one of the crucial ones is to raise awareness about the reality of this disease 
uh, and not only among the uh, liver and uh, gastroenterological community, but also among other specialists such as endocrinologists, nutritionists, diabetologists, cardiologists, all these people that see our patients with NASH and with the underlying metabolic syndrome. So raising awareness for this disease will be a challenge for the years to come. We have still a lot of work to do in uh, um, optimizing our diagnostic tools, especially non-invasive diagnosis for this disease, as far as diagnosing steatohepatitis. A lot has been done for uh, diagnosing fibrosis non-invasively, but still there is a lot of work to do and uh, we need to certainly continue our search of new biomarkers uh, that are clinically and most importantly prognostically relevant. A crucial point in the future will be to develop drugs that work in, uh, in this uh, condition to see how we can use them together with diet and lifestyle modifications. Finally, understand whether there is just one NASH or there are several forms of NASH that correspond to different uh, pathways of injury that need to be targeted in a different way through different therapeutical agents.